Hello and welcome to Channel X TV sponsored by Volo. Delighted to be joined today by Dan from American Express, who heads up American Express's Merchant Services Division in the UK. So welcome, Dan. How are you? Tell us a little I'm bit about yourself. Very well. Thanks, Chris. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, my name is Dan Edelman. I've run the merchant business for American Express in the UK. Uh, I've been with American Express about 17 years. Uh, I've worked in a number of different roles uh, for American Express and I am based in South Buckinghamshire, just outside London. Fantastic. Now, we've been hearing about growth of retailers accepting Amex over the past few years, which is why I wanted to talk to you today. But can you before we get into the detail, can you give us some examples of the types of SMEs that, that, that are starting to accept Amex for the first time? So I think during COVID, Chris, it, there was a, a recognition that what our custom, where our customers wanted to use their card was evolving faster than it ever evolved before. And, you know, we, 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 we had a huge effort um, over, over, you know, from not 2019, 2020, 2021 uh, to really not only understanding that, but also executing on what our customers want. And the way I think about it is we have card members who are customers and they want to spend and use their cards in these merchants. But then I've also got potential merchants i want to bring those card members to those merchants so you know a couple of examples would be timpsons uh, during covid i had a number of conversations and went up to manchester uh, to meet with james timpson and we we brought timpsons uh, 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 to, to, to our franchise um, great stores you know 2000 stores across uk high streets uh, 4000 photo booths in supermarkets that our customers can use their cards at and you know that that's exactly the type of place where our customers want to use their cards another great example would be b&m uh, B&M Bargains, huge retail yeah. success story, obviously, during the um, pandemic years. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I remember the first conversation we had with the finance director at B&M. He said, why on earth would anyone want to use uh, American Express cards? You know, our customers... <laughs> On, on that profile and you know obviously as the conversations progressed and the and, and the years you know over after a year or two of progression there Chris you know it was clear that to grow their business they needed more affluent customers through the doors and actually you know it's been a runaway success story American Express with B&M you know affluent people love a deal everyone loves a deal so B&M has been a, a runaway success story most recently just after Christmas we uh, added Savers which is part of the super drug perfume shop group We'd always had perfume and super drug as accepting merchants, but within the group, they had savers. We've added savers. Um, and again, it's been a runaway success story there. And our customers are spending, uh, you know, they're spending significantly more than uh, the Visa MasterCard average there. And we're delivering that value to, to, to the savers brand. Just this morning, um, I was just saying before we started, we had a, a post on our Slack channel, Farm Foods, uh, went live this morning, which is 300 locations, frozen food uh, retailers but we've been really focused on the high streets you know we've looked at charity mm -hmm. shops the likes of British Heart Foundation, Bernardo's, you know, they're, they're hundreds and hundreds of locations on every high street. And our customers don't want to spend, you know, a million pounds at Bernardo's, but they do want to go into Bernardo's. And when they go there, they want to be able to use their card. And my job is about make, making that happen for them. So, you know, that's just a, a flavor of uh, a flavor of uh, what we've been doing recently. Uh, we have a uh, we have a deal with Screwfix, which will be going live later this year, which uh, will we currently will soon will have in-app uh, acceptance with Screwfix. We'll then have um, uh, in-store acceptance later this year. So that's just a flavour. As you know, as we map the high street, we ask our customers where they want to use their car. That's just a flavour of some of the things we've been up to. And why should SMEs accept Amex? Because I mean, most people have got. Forgive me for mentioning competitors, but either a Visa <laughs> or a Mastercard, whether it be a credit card or a bank card, maybe maybe it's a link card. But they they've got a card that can be accepted in the shop almost certainly. So, what is the big argument for accepting Amex for an SME? The vast majority of those customers, Chris, have paid a fee for those cards, and they want to use that card. Uh, they want to collect the points. They want to get the benefits that uh, go along that card. So, if you're if you're there on the high street and you're a small business you know you want to satisfy your customers and it's a, it's a it's a disruption moment when you come to pay and then you find you can't use the card you want it irritates the customer and as i always say to a merchant a small merchant you might win that customer that day when you're trying to if you're a you know, trying to sell them a mirror if you're in a homeware store they might buy that mirror the problem is for you do you, are you once you've you know disrupted them at point of sale and they haven't been able to use the card that they want 
Will they come back or will they go back to the store across the street that does accept American Express? So I think there's an argument about uh, customer satisfaction. I think the second argument is particularly for the five million people that come into the UK, uh, a significant chunk of them Americans, and they don't carry another credit card. So, you know, Amex is their prime, pr primary card um, and, and it is the card that they want to use. Um, and, and, you know, and I think that the, the other point is, you know, now there's so there's fewer and fewer and fewer places that don't accept American Express. I think that the the experience I just talked about where you, when you can't use their card, it, it, it jars for customers now. And I think, you know, I think I think. If you're a small business and I spend a lot of time talking to small businesses, visiting small businesses, understanding small businesses, you know, the one thing they all tell me they need is more customers. And, you know, mm. American Express is absolutely proven we can bring you more customers and we can bring you higher spending customers and customers that will that will add value to your business. So, you know, I, I get taking Amex as a choice. It's not something everyone wants to do, but that 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 would be um, how I would articulate it to small bit small businesses. We also do a load of extra stuff that other networks don't do. We run a shop small program every year around Small Business Saturday, uh, where we incentivize all of our card members to spend at, uh, at merchants and we give them an offer to go out and spend, which is effectively in a, a, a free driving transactions to, to small merchants for free. We have a whole range of promotional and digital tools that we use to push our, our customers uh, to, 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 to merchants. So, you know, we bring a lot of extra stuff that uh, other networks don't bring. And, you know, uh, I pr pr primarily, though, I think it's about customer choice. And I think if in today's competitive world, if you disrupt the customer, then, you know, no one likes that. Yeah. And I think it, it, it's fair to say that if you bring it into the the kind of the, the typical Channel X TV viewer, they're selling online. And for years, we've been told online, accept as many payment options as possible, accept cards, accept PayPal, accept uh, maybe Amazon Pay, Stripe, we're putting all these options online, but then when we come into the store, we're saying, oh no, you've got to use this card only or cash. Or a lot of stores aren't even accepting cash now, so they're, they're reducing uh, options. So I think it just makes sense to let the customer pay how they want to. Well, I think um, particularly online, Chris, because you can lose a customer to another website within a click. You know, whereas, mm. whereas on a high street, you walk from one high street, you know, you walk from one shop to another, or you're in the shop, you've got what you want. It's a bit of a hassle, isn't it, to walk out? Whereas, you know, online, you, the customers can move can move between sites very quickly, and you, you'd never want to put yourself at a competitive disadvantage online. Mm. So can you tell me about the new payment options that Amazon are supporting to, to, to actually enhance the payments arena? So new payment options. So for Amex, so we're, we're heavily invested in um, the business. So there's obviously things like Apple Pay. We were the first uh, network in the UK and the first launch partner for Apple Pay across the UK. So that things like that and Apple Pay obviously online is now a, a big part of our payments. But some of the some of the uh, new emerging uh, areas of payments, open banking payments and open banking, Chris, was uh, set up uh, a number of years ago and was really about two things. One, uh, where you can add seats, use your bank data uh, in other places. So the best example of that that is when I log into my NatWest bank account, it says, "Do you want to do you want to add other bank accounts and see data from other bank accounts?" And I suppose that the argument for that is that it was about driving switching and and, and mm -hmm. making banking more competitive. So you know, if you bank with Monzo but you log into Barclays all the time, well, you can see your Monzo account at the same time you log in with Barclays. So that that was one push of open banking, making it easier for customers to bank with do different things with different banks. So they just didn't do everything with one bank. And, and that's and that's and that's where a lot of the focus of open banking was. I mean, when you used to go five years ago to seminars, everyone said it's about the data. That's where the future is. Actually, the most interesting part of open banking is the payment side. And we have a product called Pay with Bank Transfer. It enables you in about five to eight seconds to make a payment from your bank account. Uh, directly to a merchant. We use this ourselves in um, for paying off American Express bills. So when you go into uh, American Express, if you don't have a direct debit set up, when you go in, you click pay with bank transfer uh, on your phone, it will open automatically open up your um, uh, uh, banking app. Once you've told us who you bank with and your banking app, we know will be on your phone. You authenticate via face ID, obviously through as you log into your bank app, click pay, and then your money or your balance payment that you, that you owe American Express will move directly 
from your bank account directly to the American Express bank account instantly. That takes about seven to eight seconds. So it's a phenomenal payment experience. We're doing about a billion dollars a month now on that form of payment. We have about 28 merchants uh, on that form of payment as well. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really emerging payment option. Uh, it, it's great for small businesses. Uh, because it's a low cost form of payment and it's predominantly being used where debit cards are being used. So it's effectively, you know, I describe it as a as a better and a cheaper way of using a debit card online, particularly where you don't have a card on file, Chris, because obviously if you have a card on file or you're going to use Apple Pay, uh, it, that's quite quick as well. But this is this is this is all about um, uh, uh, customers, as I said, having a better way to pay online uh, where um, where they would use a debit card. Uh, and it's quick, simple, and easy. Merchants love it because it's low cost, um, and it's a business we're trying to try, trying to grow out. And talking of low cost, I've got to ask the the, the question: Doesn't Amex typically cost more than other payment methods? I mean, I can remember in the early days when eBay was still accepting PayPal. Um, if someone paid with a debit card, it was one price. But if they paid with Amex, then the PayPal fees were a bit higher. Now times are tight. What makes an Amex customer so valuable that I should be willing to pay perhaps a higher price? So, so I mean, f first things at first, I'd say Amex is all about the the value of the customer you're bringing. As I said, we we have higher spending card members who who will spend more, and you know, very rarely do you meet a merchant where an Amex customer uh, would 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 be spending less than than uh, one of their average customers. So, you know, the higher spending people. Obviously, our cards attract a certain demographic, which is reflected in, in what they spend. In terms of your question about price, Chris, um, you know, w w most of our pricing is actually the vast majority of our merchants. Um, and, you know, the number of uh, places our customers can use their card has grown by 46 percent over the last couple of years. The vast majority of those locations, except through third party partners like SumUp, Stripe, uh, Zettle, and, and they set the price that to, to the uh, to the merchant, and and for a significant chunk of those merchants, uh, we're bundled. So they have a uh, gotcha. good example would be sum up where they bundle the price across Visa, Mastercard, uh, and Amex, and we we have then relationships with people like WorldPay, Barclays, Dojo, uh, uh, who. Uh, who we are also moving to that model. So we think the future is we're going to see uh, significantly more merchants in that in that model where it's a third party model where the partner will set the price to the merchant uh, than where than where will than where we'll set the price. Um, but as I said, you know, Amex brings higher spending customers, uh, and you know that 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 we price for the value that we deliver. Yeah, and I, I think that's really interesting. Actually, getting a bundled deal from a provider because that really takes away the the the, the last reason for not accepting Amex. If, if it's going to cost the same, why wouldn't you? Well, Chris, you you, you say that. I mean, we 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 what our learning has been. Our learning has been, you know, whilst merchants will say price and price is obviously a key key decision maker. If you look at the success of businesses like Stripe, there's other things that merchants value. So you know reconciliation one one payment across yeah. all, all, all schemes right the second thing is the data that they see around um the data that they see around payments so the fact that they uh, have extra added data uh, that people like stripe would provide around a payment and then and then the other thing that um that, that is important is a single point of contact for customer service. So, you know, that not have to, you know, that one of the biggest frustrations I hear from merchants is they have to have a separate logon, separate ID to go to yeah. amex.com. Uh, they have to call a different number. The process is different. They don't understand it. And, you know, small businesses, time is money and you're the, you know, the finance director, the marketing director, the HR director, the sales director, and you're trying to run your shop. So, you know, actually making it simpler for small merchants is a key, key element of uh, accepting American Express. And that's why, you know, as we work with partners like Stripe, Adyen, uh, Zettel, uh, SumUp, uh, th th those partners have drew uh, en enabled to us to drive that one stop shop, shop solution. So it's not only price, it's one phone number to, for customer service, uh, it's one log on so you can see all your Visa, MasterCard, and Amex transactions in one place. And it, it's really interesting. But, but what I want to know now is what about the, the kind of the, the younger customers, the, the millennials, the Gen Zs? 
are they using Amex um, or, or is this something that is generally for a, 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 an older generation? What, what stage of life do people start using their Amex cards? Look, I mean, probably about 10 years ago, people were concerned um, uh, because they saw people like Monzo, Starling, and they were signing up significant amounts of younger customers. And, and you know, 10, probably eight, 10 years ago, people in Amex were like, well, how does our brand work in, in this segment? And what, what, what we actually learned is we had nothing to worry about. 60% of our new accounts uh, globally now come from millennial uh, Gen Z customers. Oh. And our brand works really well with that segment. Um, and if you think about some of the things about Generation Z as a segment, you know, they, they you know, they, they talk about uh, they're, they're globe trotting travelers. They, you know, it's all about experiences and things that they can they, they can deliver. You know, they, they 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 they, you know, they work and then really their life is outside work, whether it's side hustles or traveling the world or doing extra special experiences, things and our, our brands work really, really well in that segment. So, you know, we, we see significant numbers of customers coming onto the network. Uh, who are, as I said, 60% in the millennial Gen Z segment. And the most interesting thing about that segment is we capture more of their spend than ever before for, for, for newly acquired customers. Because, you know, as I said, we've got nearly uh, 45, 50% more places accepting American Express than a couple of years ago. When new customers come onto the network, their expectation is they can just use it everywhere because they haven't had an experience, for, you know, where less places accepted American Express. So, so we find them high spending. You know, things like our sponsorships, uh, British Summertime, and things like that. Uh, some of the experiences we deliver, and 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 our, our younger customers are often on paying some of our higher fee-paying cards, like our Gold Card and our Platinum Card, because it really appeals to the way they want to live their life mm. and that, that, that's actually really interesting because it's a, a, a huge, huge segment and especially that the, 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 they're willing to go outside of outside of work hours that they're, they're doing more exciting things and possibly <laughs> traveling the world want to use the same card at home and abroad but finally before i let you go can you just touch a little bit more on how you support SMEs? You mentioned things like Small Business Saturday, which always comes up in in, in the autumn. But what, what other ways are there that you support small businesses? And what can I expect from American Express to actually drive customers into their premises or, or on their online stores? So, so we do a number of things. So, so as you said, we support Small Business Saturday. Small Business Saturday is a movement. Um, uh, uh, Michelle Ovens, who runs that movement, is a is 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 someone we work with very closely, and we actually fund her focusing on. Um, uh, uh, we fund her focusing on that movement, um, and we obviously bring Shop Small together uh, with that with that movement, which is where we push our card members to you know explore their local high street. So we 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 link that together, but we do things all across the year, Chris. So you know whether it's emails we send to car, card members where we say here are some places that we think you'll, you would like to spend locally, based on the fact that you know you spent at these restaurants and people that spent at these restaurants also spent at these other restaurants locally and you haven't spent there so a bit like amazon does where they say people well, they used to say i don't know if they say anymore you, you know yeah. people that bought this also bought this so we do we do a lot of that with our customers uh, when customers come into the uk or whenever they land in one of our key destinations we'll email them uh, with a guide and we often feature small merchants in that guide and say these are some of the key places that uh that that our customers like to spend in this location because we know you're new to rome and you might not know uh not might not know where to where to spend so so we do, we do we do a number of things like that uh over 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 the year but you know at the heart of the business chris the key thing we do every, and spend every day doing is working out how can we make our small merchants lives easier uh, and how can we change you know simplify our processes simplify what we're doing because you know we we realize that we want small merchants doing business, being successful, not worrying about how they're going to do this or how they're going to do that with American Express. You know, if, if we make small businesses successful and they're, so they can spend more time on their business, then they're going to do more business with American Express. So mm. we, we try and make ourselves uh, and we don't get it right all the time. I acknowledge that, Chris, but we try and make ourselves as customer friendly as possible. And that's one of the great things I love about working at American Express is, you know, we are a very, very, very customer centric brand. Uh, you know, if, you know, if we if every every complaint is looked at, we review them, we understand how to make things better. We try and learn. We admit we've made mistakes. We recover. You know, we are very, very customer centric, particularly for our small business customers, because we realize they're the backbone of, of the UK. 
And final question for, for those that aren't currently accepting American Express and having listened to this want to, where do they go to sign up? And that's probably a complicated answer because it, it, it might be a payment provider. It might be American Express. When when should they speak to Amex directly and when should they sign up for a partner? So, so there's multiple ways you can accept American Express. You can always ring us directly. If you if you Google uh, accept American Express UK, there's a number you can call us and accept directly. That's absolutely, uh, we have people on the phone ready to answer the call if people would like to do that. Or you can ex- you can accept through your partner. So people like Stripe or Adyen, uh, they, 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 you can accept the American Express through them. So you can contact them and ask for American Express to be added. M- many of your customers and listeners, Chris, will already be accepting American Express and might not realize it. So, you know, if you're signed up to sum up, Zettle, Square, any of those payment forms, you're probably automatically opted in to uh, accept American American Express. And then if you're a more traditional uh, high street retailer, you know, we have deals with the likes of WorldPay, Barclays, Dojo. Again, either you can contact us directly or you can contact your current provider and they can uh, they can sign you up for American Express. So there's many different ways to sign up, but we'd love to have all of your uh, all of your listeners and uh, customers on uh, on the, on the network and bring value to their businesses. Uh, Dan, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's been absolutely fascinating, and especially to hear uh, a bit more about the value of the Amex uh, American Express customer and, and, and the, the fact that they're probably going to be a higher spending customers, which I think um, everyone could do with a few more of those. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me here and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Cheers, Chris.